it won't require exile, so it will not break the bank, nor will it break your GPU for that matter. You don't need a powerful build. It doesn't require bulk selling, and it's filled with delicious dopamine. Welcome back, everybody. The name is Wolf, and today I'll be showing you the brand new farming strat that I've been working on uh, to refine and make better after it was given to me by a wonderful viewer called Elvish. We have been working together and it's been quite fun because this strat is delicious dopamine mate manifest. The only thing, however, you do need is a good dominant mouse hand because it is going to require lots and lots of clicking. But yes, we'll show you what you need to get it going. We'll show you some gameplay and the Atlas tree and then perhaps you can help me refine it because we are still in the process of making it better. But yes, let me show you what you are going to need at the very least to pop off. The star of the show is the All Flame Ember of Manifested Wealth. As you can see, pack monsters drop currency items, and it's going to drop lots of currency. It's going to drop mostly Chaos, Exalted Orbs, and Vow Orbs. You can sell the Vow Orbs in bulk for 200 to 250 at the moment for a Divine, depending on how much bulk you have. But other than that, it's Chaos, it's Exalted Orbs. We all love those. On top of that, it's going to require a very familiar strat, the strong boxes. So we are going to use uh, one scarab of hidden compartments. We're going to do double ambush scarab. You could also go for the more expensive scarab if you want to super juice uh, the, the, the monstrous treasure one. And of course, we're going to increase the pack size because we want all the pack size possible because manifested wealth, I don't believe actually responds to rarity or quantity. But if you have more monsters of manifest wealth, they will definitely drop their currency. And I believe it's a guaranteed drop as well. At least that's what it feels like, and you will see soon as to why I say that. I'm actually using a tier 10 map. You could push this to tier 16 maps, which might be better, because uh, then you can get tier 17 maps. You can also push for some other strats, maybe get some Conqueror maps involved. Maybe you could run Conqueror maps on top of this. There are some crazy things you could do, including running tier 17 maps, but it really depends on how much you want to invest. Um, and possibly risk your profit margins. But this proves that I can actually run it in a very, very safe environment, so perhaps even hardcore viable. But yeah, let's just dive right in. We're going to put in our scarabs. This will allow us to get all the juice we need, because if we have an all flame on the actual map or reinfusing it, it is part of the map, so it also shows up in strong boxes, and then we can reopen those boxes for more guaranteed drops from the manifested wealth. It's very similar to the exile strat, but we're not using exiles, right? I think at this point we understand that. So we have everything ambush on the craft, get ready to plop it in. Now, the only thing you have to do is to make sure that you put the manifested wealth on the highest density possible. We right here have only normal density, which is regrettable. You want high density. Luckily enough, we do have increased quantity but like I said, I don't believe that actually affects the drops um, from the actual uh, manifested wealth. It seems to have its mind of its own, but perhaps I am wrong. Do correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yes, let's just dive right in. So we are here in the middle of a map right now. As you can see, the map we just entered. This is the normal density map. And as you can see, there will be plenty of loot everywhere, depending on how lucky you are with reopening the boxes and which units they end up spawning, you will find so many just continuous loot explosions filled with chaos and oftentimes also an exalt or two, which is just very, very good. And that's pretty much all you really have to do. You kind of have to keep moving, you keep blasting, and you have to do keep an eye out for the roly bolies. Those are the manifested wealth, these balls that roll away because they are afraid of you. And they will try to run away from you. So if you don't kill them fast enough with good enough AoE or explosions or something, they will kind of disappear and hide. And then you kind of have to search for them, which can be a bit time consuming if you don't have a fast build, which is also why Nico is pretty, pretty good. Because not only can he give you extra boxes, he also gives you a bunch of movement speed. But as you can see, plenty of loot around. I'm trying to keep the loot filter active to give you kind of an idea of how much is dropping on a normal density. So if you have a high density, which is the common occurrence, you end up even with more loot. So just keep an eye out on that, or don't hide your loot filter until you're completely done with the map and then you start looting. Now it will hurt your hand if you're gonna click it manually. So I hope you can find alternative methods I may or may not be able to endorse because obvious reasons, you know, 
Um, but other than that, go forth, just keep blasting, and enjoy not having to deal with a map DCing or your GPU getting fried. So I just finished looting the map, my hand hurts, but here we are. I removed all the bubble gum, like the regrets and the scours and all that type of stuff, and we are left over with what is a respectable hole for a normal density. Normally, you can find high-density packs, but we had none when we opened the map, and still, we managed to get all of this. So it's only going to get better if you roll into high density and you have good RNG boxes. Now, we have a little bit of Scarab love right here. Nothing to write home about, though. It's certainly not going to keep up with any of the Scarab farmers out there. But it's nice if you get lucky. A big hit or just some sustain is going to preserve some chaos investment. But other than that, it's just there. We do, however, have 74 Val Orbs, which is pretty good. I typically land between somewhere uh, between seven, 70 to 100 Val Orbs and per map. And it's about 200 to 254 Divines. So every give or take three maps, it's about a Divine's worth of Val Orbs, which is really, really nice. We also have seven Exalted Orbs that we're just laying on the floor. Now, right now, we have Exalted Orbs going for about... 11 chaos give or take 11 to 12 chaos so that's an easy 77 plus chaos worth on top of that and then in terms of just raw chaos we have to pick up off the ground 351 so we're well over 400 chaos 420 chaos worth of currency while having only spent 220 to 230 chaos in terms of investment on this particular map now, if you go into higher maps, tier 16s, you can also drop the tier 17 maps. You can get Conqueror Fragments if you get going. You know, if you start investing into more juice like that. But this is pretty respectable. It didn't break the bank compared to the other strats. It didn't break the GPU. And it's just very fun. So you can check it out as well. Before we go into the Atlas tree, it is important to know that Manifested Wealth seems to be unaffected by rarity and quantity when it comes down to their natural drops. And since they are the star of the show and we're trying to maximize them, we have to find different ways to do so other than rarity and, of course, quantity. So we're using strong boxes. We're using the potential strong box bonus from Nico. We're using, of course, modifier increases because we want more pack size. More pack size means more units. More units means more guaranteed drops. More guaranteed drops means more loot. You're following? So that's kind of what the Atlas tree is based around. I'm still kind of experimenting with it, but yes. We are picking up all the usual suspects with the strong boxes. Um, this just makes it so that we have good value and more chance to reopen them, which means more chances to spawn those same units that have the guaranteed drop rates, right? Very, very good. You might even be able to leverage Ritual with this. I'm not sure if that actually works. I know the Exiles are doing it, or the Exile Farmers are doing that, so maybe there's a path with that as well. I have not yet tested it, but we might pursue that. Who knows? Um, on top of that, we are using Nico. We are forcing Nico onto the map because of that secret strongbox tech. If you go right here, the price of progress, there's three outcomes with doomed spirits. There's a spirit, there's a shrine, and there's a free strongbox. And the strongbox does respect the Atlas tree. So you are going to be able to reopen it by chance. It's going to have the all flame in it. It's going to perhaps also, well, it's definitely going to be corrupted and rare as well. So more strong boxes, more procs to reopen, more units, more units means more guaranteed drops chance. It's just awesome, right? Really, really good stuff. We're also using shrines because shrines respect the units on the map. And since we are changing the units on the map, we might find ourselves with a bunch of these wonderful manifested wealth boys while also buffing ourselves with nice shrine, uh, with nice shrine effects. Definitely very, very good. It's kind of like the tech that most people use for eight, ma eight mod map farming. I believe it's kind of that I'm kind of leveraging here and ex uh, kind of experimenting with. Uh, we are also blocking as many content pieces as we can because if they can't put any other kind of league mechanic on the map, they have to resort to the league mechanics that they could put on the map, which may be boxes. Thus, more boxes, which is more good. Kind of speaks for itself. We are juicing some of the map drops as well because if you are planning to do tier 16s, like I've also been doing on stream, you might find yourself trying to drop tier 16 maps for sustain, for bulk selling, or even tier 17s at some point, um, just to make sure you can have that extra penny once you get lucky with those nice, uh, use cases. Um, on top of that, yeah, we have discussed Nico, 100% Nico chance. Yeah, packed with NGs is lovely, blocking the pack, or yeah, the league mechanics. I am picking up the uh, Imperial Raves for the higher tier of Lantern. 
modifiers. Very, very good. We also go with the Devote Pursuit, just because if you have a really nice, juicy, uh, devoted modifier, it just becomes even better, which is very, very good. Some of them you can actually leverage on the Manifest as well with great effect once you get them uh, to be greater in numbers. Um, on top of that, we have, let's see, what have I forgotten? That's more Shrine stuff. Yeah, more mods for the maps because we do want to increase quality when we can, but also pack size and such seems to be affected by it. And more pack size means more units. That seems to be very, very good. We also pick up the scarabs just because it is nice to have them when they do drop. It is a nice, pretty penny. Other than that, yeah, we pick up some travel notes for the increased explicit modifiers. And that's pretty much it. For those who are wondering about the Conqueror map, if you want to do super juiced versions of this type of strat, you want to run them on Conqueror maps because they have a additional pack size, but you can also leverage monster pack influence by Conquerors in your maps have 5% increased pack size. And since they can be natural units on your map, the all flame members, you can actually have them be influenced by the Conqueror, giving them more units through Conqueror influence pack size. It's just a whole lot of cascading effects happening right there. Um, but yes, that's kind of what the plan is right now. It seems to be working very, very well, especially on tier 16s. I'm making four. I have seen 400, nearly 500 plus raw chaos, not speaking of Val orbs or even exalted orbs, of course. So yeah, it's been very, very good. Hopefully this kind of makes sense. It should speak for itself once you understand most strong box strats. So go forth, have fun and um, be careful with your hand because it is going to hurt.